Tell me about a time that you successfully hacked some system to your advantage. If you wanna get into Y Combinator, you're going to have to know the answer to this question. As a former YC partner, in this video, I'm gonna spill the secrets on how to get into YC. How's it going? I'm Justin, Justin Khan from Justin.tv. What's up guys, it's Justin Khan, co-founder of Twitch here and former YC partner. First of all, let me tell you why you wanna get into YC. Well, YC is the best startup accelerator in the world. It's the firm that invented the startup accelerator back in 2005 when I first got in. And since 2005, in the last 16 years, YC has funded over 3,000 companies worth over $400 billion today, including companies that you've heard of like Instacart, Reddit, Airbnb, Dropbox, Coinbase, and of course, Twitch. Now, in my startup career, I went through YC a number of times. So let me tell you why it's so priceless. YC offers a short boot camp for hundreds of companies. Companies come in, they meet with group partners who help them develop their startup idea, set goals, and push to accomplish a lot in a very short period of time. It really gets that DNA of getting things done quickly set in your early nascent startup. And then YC brings in guest speakers like yours truly, people who have been entrepreneurs in the Silicon Valley ecosystem and have made it. And then YC culminates in a demo day where you get to pitch in front of thousands of investors, including guys like Sequoia, Andreessen Horowitz, Benchmark, and many, many more. What's even more important about YC is that you get to be part of a community of founders. There are thousands of founders from all over the world who are helping each other, both in YC's private forums, in local groups. Any help or question that you have, there's some YC alumni that can help you along. Now, a common question is who should do YC? People often think, am I too early? Am I too late? I remember once when I was coaching the Airbnb guys before they went to YC, they thought they were actually too late for YC because they'd already launched and that YC was only for pre-launch companies. Of course, things have changed now and people think that they're often too early for YC because they think YC is only for companies that have accelerating rapid growth. And the truth is that YC is pretty much good for any company. No matter where you're at, it's gonna help you accelerate your growth and raise funds at a higher valuation, as well as join a community of like-minded founders who are all trying to make it. Some common questions about YC. Do you need traction to do YC? No, some of the best companies to come out of YC are companies that were completely pre-product. Companies like Cruise, the self-driving car company, for example. Another question, how old are founders that usually do YC? They span the age range. It's people who have dropped out of high school all the way to people who are in their 60s or even 70s. YC is literally for anyone, anywhere in the world. Another common question, I heard YC is all downhill now, it's funding too many founders and it's lost its magic. Well, let me tell you that the YC founders that I funded through Go Capital in the last year don't feel that way. I think people really appreciate the work that YC has done to make the classes feel smaller by dividing into groups and creating sections within those groups. This is something I've been hearing since I joined YC as a partner in 2014, and some of the biggest companies ever have come after that, You know, including companies like Brex. What are the downsides of YC that people don't talk about? Obviously, you're giving up 7% of your company, which is expensive. I do think that it's a little bit of an intelligence test because you go to this demo day, which helps you raise money at a much higher premium than you know seven percent so effectively you're earning that back in your seed round other downsides of yc you know one thing that people don't talk about that much i guess i'll say is like yc has a very specific way of starting a company you know it's about going out there talking to customers and figuring out how to build what those customers want and grow. You know, there's an emphasis on growing, getting more customers. Now, that doesn't necessarily work for every kind of company. If you're building more of a traditional company, something that you wanna bootstrap, YC is about really optimizing for the Silicon Valley ecosystem and getting the scale, and it might not be the right fit for every company. You know, if you're trying to bootstrap something and grow slowly, it might not be the best fit for you. What makes YC different from other accelerators? Well, <laughs> you know, YC was the first. YC was the first accelerator, invented this category. And I think it's a little bit like Harvard of Silicon Valley. You know, if you get into Harvard, you want to go to Harvard. Yes, you can go to these other accelerators, but they're kind of like community college. All the reputation has accrued to YC as this premier accelerator. And so oftentimes when people think about other accelerators, it's, you know, it's really just not the same. And so, you know, I think everything downstream from going to the accelerator reflects that. Things like valuation, things like the regard that investors give to companies that have been through YC. Another question, why not just skip YC and raise from investors directly? So many companies do that, but YC makes it easy to raise money because they create a market for investors for equity in your startup. Whenever you're trying to sell something and get an optimal price for it, 
You wanna create a market. What's a market? You bring multiple buyers and multiple sellers at the same place, and that creates optimal liquidity. So what does that mean for startups? You're getting all the investors to come to one demo day, see companies in action, and it gets super hyped. It makes it easy for you to go and collect checks from people who are interested. The old way of raising money was talk to investors one at a time, see who's interested, and maybe get a deal after months. In YC, I've seen people get their seed round done in a day. What is Michael Seibel like? So Michael, who runs the YC Core program, which is their early stage program, is a really great friend of mine, co-founder of Twitch with me. And he is one of the most helpful people when it comes to startups ever. You know, he is somebody who works selflessly and tirelessly to help startups. And he did this before he was at YC. He helped the Airbnb founders navigate the early days of starting their company. He, he's gonna hate me for this, but he's, I'll say it, he's someone who, no matter what time it is, you can give him a call and he will try to figure out how to be helpful. On to the tips. I'm gonna divide this into two sections, the application and then the interview. Let's start with the application. The first thing you need to know is that people who are reading your Y Combinator application are reading a shit ton of applications. So you need to figure out how to make yours stand out, make it concise and make it simple. That means no buzzwords. Whenever you're in an industry, it's so easy to get trapped in using the lingo of the industry. You've gotta explain this like you're explaining it to your friend who has no context for anything about your line of work, your business. When you're writing your application, skip all the buzzwords. A great way to test if your application is understandable is to show it to a friend who is not in your industry and tell them to read it. Give them five minutes. At the end of that five minutes, ask them to tell you what your application was about. If they can tell you, that's great. If not, you need to do some work. When you're writing your application, think about how you're gonna teach the reader something. The best applications teach me something interesting. They engage me by teaching me something that I don't know about, I learned something new through them. That's what really activates my curiosity. It makes me wanna have an interview with this candidate because I wanna find out something more. Here are some things I'm looking for in the YC application. Number one, team. Can this team build stuff? Do they have a history of working together, building things? Is this team one that can actually bring this product or service to market? You know, you don't have to have a track record of executing at like a big company. If you're in college or high school, you've been hacking on projects with friends. Maybe you've been building things at hackathons. Some track record of actually doing anything. The worst is when, you know, you have a bunch of business guys who are like, we have this great idea, but we don't know how to build it. So can you help us hire engineers? You know, I've been hearing that for like 15 years. Number two, market. Is this a big market? Or if it's not a big market yet, is it building on something that's interesting enough that it could actually turn into a big market one day? You know, think about Justin TV, right? Justin TV, it was a silly idea. We're gonna make live video about ourselves. But what Paul Graham saw in that idea was that eventually maybe there could be this new form of reality TV where lots of different live video that didn't previously exist before is enabled by the internet. And lo and behold, that's what came to pass with Twitch. Number three, insight. Does this team have some insight into this market as to how they're going to tackle this market in a way that people haven't thought about or is novel or has never been done before? And number four is demo. Is there something here that looks like it's compelling, kind of backs up that they can build things? You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be a fully functional working thing, but it, you know, maybe it's just a prototype, maybe it's a Figma, maybe it's a landing page, something that gives me some visual context for what's going on with this application. What's the difference between a startup that gets an interview and one that doesn't? The simplest answer, did I understand it or did I not understand it? So many applications when you read them, you just don't get why it's a compelling thing. You don't get why it's a compelling product. You don't understand what it is and you just go to the next one. The good news is this is testable. Just show your application to friends of yours and see, can they recite back to you why it's a compelling idea or not? If the answer is no, go back to the drawing board. Now you might notice that there's a bunch of application questions that ask about you, the founder. These are actually the most important questions. And the reason they're important is because as an early stage investor, you're trying to figure out, are these founders I want to back? Are these people killers who are going to get it done no matter what? Or are they soft as butter? So some of these questions are like, what are the most impressive things that the founders have built? Here, what you're doing is establishing a track record. These are people who can build something impressive. The question you most have to pay attention to is what is your company going to make? Now, most answers to the question are terrible. They're filled with jargon and they're way too long. A good rule of thumb is to make this as short as possible while conveying exactly what you do. And as I said before, use simple language. All right, now let's talk about the interview. The first thing I always say is you need to know what you're doing. My friend Balaji talks about the idea maze, which is have you as a founder gone down all of the different pathways that your idea could go? When I'm asking you questions about what your company does, I want you to have already thought about it 
and have a compelling answer for why you have an opinion one way or the other. Part of this is knowing your core metrics and really even before you know them, defining them. If I ask you what metrics are important in your business and you say daily active users, you should know why and then you should know what those metrics are and how they've been growing. That gives me confidence that you have a handle on what's important in your own business. After that, it's all about what's a plan to affect those metrics. So, you know, if I'm asking you, how are you going to grow your business? You should have a plan for, okay, well, our DAU is this today and we have this list of five things that we can do to affect our DAU, which is our most important metric. So here's what we're gonna try next. It's not so important that those things be right, it's that you have some compelling reason for why you think they're important and you have a plan to execute on them. Being able to drill into the metrics of your business is gonna help you present a positive business case for why your company is worth investing in. And it shows that you're a data-driven founder that knows your company's metrics and is constantly working to improve them. If you don't know your metrics, that's an early warning sign that you're the type of founder who isn't paying attention to them and is not creating a feedback loop that's going to iterate on them towards success. Number two, understand the small idea and the big idea. So the small idea with your startup is the local problem that you're trying to solve. It's the problem you experience as a product manager and then maybe talk to 100 other product managers who had the same problem and you're trying to build something for them. You really understand the customer profile because you've done the research to understand how to solve this specific pain point for this specific person in this specific time in their lives. Now, that's great and that's gonna build, help you build something that gets product market fit. What I also wanna understand in the interview is that this is going to lead to something much, much bigger. And that's the really big idea. In a startup, you're always gonna to wanna to have in your back pocket the vision for how this can become something that changes the world. So if you build something for this 100 product managers and that grows to 10,000 product managers, here are all the things, here's how we can use that as a platform to really change how products are built or whatever it is. You should be pitching the biggest vision that you believe in. That's what investors want back. And YC is no exception. Number three, you wanna convey founder synergy. What does this mean? It means that you guys are a great founding team together. I like to say one of the founders should quarterback answering the questions and assign them off to other founders. Don't talk over each other. Make sure it shows that you guys are on the same page. The worst thing possible is when founders talk over each other or present that they don't really agree on the strategy. That's pretty much an instant sign that I don't want to fund this clusterfuck. If you guys have worked together in the past on projects, you know, maybe you've been coworkers for years or started another company together, it always makes sense to bring that up. So once you land an interview, how should you prepare? Well, the thing I like to do is go get practice interviews. So find people who are alumni, who have been through the interview, and ask them if they'll do a prep interview with you. What does that mean? It's pretty simple. You sit down on Zoom with them, they ask you questions about your startup, you answer them, write down all the questions that people ask you, and then practice generating compelling answers for those questions and memorizing them. Here are some specific interview tips. Number one, be concise. Similar to your written application, brevity makes things simple and understandable. And that's gonna be your ally in this interview. Getting straight to the point shows confidence. And often, if you drone on and on and on, the interview is gonna get lost and bored and stop paying attention. You need to earn your interviewer's attention. And the easiest way to do that is to answer things in concise, brief, powerful answers. Number two, convey your most important points. No more than three. What I like to do is write down, here are the three things that I wanna get across in the interview. Maybe it's our product is Uber for dogs. Uh, you press a button and get a dog immediately. We're growing 30% every month and we have positive unit economics. And then I wanna make sure that I communicate those specific things in the interview. Number three, don't get defensive. No matter what you do, don't get defensive. If partners don't get it, if the interviewers don't get it, if they challenge your assumptions, the worst thing you can do is get defensive about it and convey the opinion like, you don't understand what you're talking about. I'm the expert. When somebody asks you challenging questions, that's an opportunity for you to say, hey, I don't know all the answers, but here's how I came to this conclusion and demonstrate how you think. That's gonna show, one, you're confident that your arguments stand on their own merits, and number two, that you're open to new ideas. Number four, don't rely on a demo. Demos always break, and to be honest, the YC partners are gonna want you to explain what it is more than they care about seeing a specific demo. You might get to the demo, and that's great, but it's not something that you wanna count on. And number five, be confident. Everybody is a little bit nervous. Remember, you're the expert in your business. Be confident in your answers and your business and walk into the room knowing that you know it more deeply than anybody else. All right, you guys, that was the video. If you found this helpful, you know what to do. Smash subscribe, bang that bell, and I'll be your best friend forever. I hope you guys apply to YC and get in. And if so, I'll see you guys at Demo Day.